Hey, what's up? It's Rob Beardsley. I'm here at a beautiful event in Malibu, and I wanted to make a quick video about the allocation of depreciation in real estate syndications. I've actually received numerous questions about this lately uh, from investors wondering how the tax benefits of a real estate investment are treated when distributed more in a partnership or a syndication. And so it obviously varies by deal, so you have to look through closely the PPM of the investment opportunity. But generally speaking, there's really two ways to address this issue. The depreciation can be allocated on a prorated basis uh, based on capital account, so or capital contribution. So if, if there's a million dollars of total equity and an investor puts in 100,000, they would receive 10% of the depreciation in that scenario where you would just pass through virtually all the depreciation to the investors. Now, another way to go, which is more common, is actually where the GP, irrespective of their capital contribution, will get a percentage of the depreciation based on their ownership. Let's say there's a 70-30 split on the deal where the GP gets a 30% promote, subordinate to an eight pref. They technically are class B members and have 30% ownership of the deal as class B members. And those class B members can also be entitled to their portion of the depreciation, 30%. So now investors would actually receive their prorated portion of the depreciation of that 70%, not of the 100, but of the 70% that's available to the investors. So this is obviously a good thing for sponsors that are in need of that depreciation and a bad thing for passive investors in need of that depreciation. Uh, the reality is most passive investors in syndications cannot utilize the full benefits of those passive losses because they aren't real estate professionals and therefore they can't use those losses to offset active income or W-2 income. So it's not a huge deal if the GP is essentially taking a uh, skimming off the top on the depreciation. But if you are an investor and you have tax reasons for investing and you want to maximize the depreciation that you're getting from a deal, then it's critical that you ensure that the deal is structured so that you will get all your, the depreciation based on your capital. If it's so important, then you can even find ways to do deals where the depreciation is maximized. So one way that depreciation can be maximized is by investing in deals that are utilizing a lot of leverage. Because for example, if you're buying a $10 million property and you're putting 30% down, that $3 million of equity is going to get the depreciation spread across evenly amongst the 3 million. Now, what if you were to lever up? What if you were to somehow lever the capital structure where there's 90% leverage and only a million dollars of equity in the deal? Well, that million dollars is now going to get the same amount of depreciation that the 3 million would. So leverage helps you getting more depreciation for every dollar you invest. There's some other ways that, that can be structured, not just with debt, but with preferred equity or mezzanine or some sort of depreciation sharing structure. But generally speaking, that's, that's really what you're looking for if you are an investor. Bottom line is whether depreciation is fully passed through or if the GP is taking a portion based on their class B membership, if you are just seeking to shelter the cash flow, the income from the investment itself through the passive losses, either scenario is likely going to be able to accomplish that because the hold period, the projected hold period compared to the magnitude of the bonus appreciation captured uh, up front in the deal, it way offsets the cash flow. So you're gonna have much more depreciation typically than you know what to do with if you aren't a real estate professional in a syndication.